Charting disintermediates reality from the financial news. Disintermediation is where you take out the middleman. And the reason we take out the financial news is because we don't need them to show us what reality is. If you can chart, that is, you can follow price movement, that's what you need. The news media is there to do what? To make sure they sell ads for their sponsors. They are not, you are not at the top of their food chain. In fact, I don't know if you come into the equation at all, except to try to keep you there with spells, with, oh, great graphics and pretty talking heads and all sorts of stuff to keep you on the hook. But the only thing you need to pay attention to, my friends, is all that counts, and that is price movement. And that's what we focus on every day. So don't don't get into the spell. Pay attention to what's actually going on. Let's jump into the charts. I just got through the hurricane that rolled up the East Coast. I'm sitting here in the heat as my place slowly warms up. I've got to go find somewhere to upload this to you. I do have internet connections, but no power. And I have enough charge on the computer to get this done and then to get it uploaded to you, but I can't wait to get in my car and the air conditioning as I sweat. We're gonna go through our four big charts. Everything is up for the day. Don't forget Patreon members, 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow. You should have your email. If you don't have it with the connection information, then of course you need to email me. It's the same connection information we always have. If you haven't gotten your questions in or the stocks you want us to help analyze for practice trading, Get those into us. We see the first day, well, we're into the second day, first day of the latest two-day candle, but we'll start with the weekly. We have a nice big green up candle that's forming, little wick on top. I had to move the two-day aside. We see that price percent oscillator heading up nicely. Derivative oscillator finally popped up for us. That's good to see. Go to the two-day chart, and I got that moved, messing around with it. We see that, of course, we're into the first day of the latest two-day candle. It's nice to see the price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line, derivative oscillator gaining momentum. This is just the first day, but we are up 0.39%, not a lot. And of course, mostly sideways sliding, but again, a little slowdown in the up movement in the morning, then up in the afternoon, but that's nice to see. We saw the four day and the four hour, half day and the two day, forgive me, we saw them cross over at the same time going up. And that's good to see. And we again are seeing things continue to rally, continue to move up a little bit. Again, trepidation because this is the second, I guess, uh, recross, uh, second or third maybe. So pay attention. Don't get overly excited about it. Be ready to take your profit and pull it if things start to go south, but we'll continue to watch and see. We look at the Qs again, up about the same as the S&P 500. This is the NASDAQ 100, QQQ, up 0.37%. Again, a nice green up candle forming with a little wick on top. Price percent oscillators moving up ever so slightly. Derivative oscillators still losing momentum. First day of the latest two-day candle. Don't have a cross. If it's a big up day on Wednesday, might have a crossover, so pay attention. Green up candle forming. The prior green up candle, the two-day, 270.15 was the high here, 270.48, so a little bit higher. Look at the half-day chart. We used to call that the four-hour, but it's actually 195 minutes. And what do we see going on? Again, a little slowdown in the up movement in the morning, then on about the same in the afternoon, hitting about the same high. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator gaining some energy. That's where we are as far as stocks go. Let's go to bonds up 0.95%. Are we gonna have a weekly vertical crossover by the end of the week? Maybe. We do have a red open box candle. That means a slowdown in the up movement forming. High is 171.58. Last week, 171.46. So we are reaching a little bit higher by a few cents. So that's good to see. Let's just see how things continue to move. What's the two-day showing us? Well, after a, a red spinning top previously, we have a green candle forming. That's good to see. Price percent oscillator, which was flat, is ticking up a little. Derivative oscillator still losing upward momentum. Four-hour chart up in the morning. 
uh, about the same in the afternoon, reaching about the same high, and hasn't crossed over going up, but looks like it might be headed that way. So bonds are looking good as sweat continues to pour off me. Uh, I'm now going to go to gold. Gold, the big up one for the day. So sweet, up 2.13%. Look at gold just continuing to bust up. Green up candle forming with a wick on top, well above the weekly trend line. Go to that two, and the price percent oscillator heading up and the derivative oscillator. Go to the two day chart, first day of it. We again see price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator heading up, reaching a higher high on this first day, well above the two day and well, well above the weekly. And look at that four hour chart, just moving on up in the morning, blasting up even higher in the afternoon. We had seen a laminated price percent oscillator for, oh, a couple of days, and now it's starting to pull away. Derivative oscillator might go positive too. So again, things are looking quite nice, quite nice on gold. Wasn't that just a beautiful weekly vertical crossover? That one prior had failed us, but again, 13 we've had this year, 13 weekly vertical crossovers on our four big charts. Only one has failed us. So success out of 12 of 13. Just beautiful. And gold pounding up. I'm excited for all of you who did this practice trade because you were just seeing gold climb, climb, climb. Folks, I'm feeling a little better now that I got things moving. Let's just take a look. I said I wasn't going to do this, but daggone it. You guys tune in. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin took a little bit down for the day. I am having a hard time in this light reading. I can't read what it says on my screen. Oh, here we go. 1% is what it looks like. Up about 1% for the day. Look at that weekly. The prior week, the high was 11, 226, 11, 11, 300. So we did reach a higher high so far this week. That's good to see. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator heading up, two-day chart. Again, reaching a little bit of a higher high. We see a little bit of a slowdown in the price percent oscillator, but the derivative oscillator is going up, as is the price percent oscillator. Look at the half-day chart, and we can see, however, we had that 1% down move. We can see where things are sliding over. So again, that's happening on the half-day chart, but what we really care most about is what's going on on that two-day and weekly. So again, pay close attention. See how the two-day finishes up, just what it does. And let's just see, uh, 11,380, 11, oh, so, so right around the same spot. But, uh, but again, we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see there as things continue to move along. So busting up at the same point. So that's where we are and we'll continue to monitor Bitcoin, see where it goes, pay close attention to what happens on that two-day chart tomorrow. We go to real estate, what's up there? We see the price percent oscillator continuing to track up, not reaching a higher high so far on that weekly chart, derivative oscillator going up ever so slightly. Go to the two-day chart, and we see a green spinning top with a long wick on the top, a little one on the bottom after a red spinning top. Price percent oscillator tracking up a little, derivative oscillator going up. And what do we see going on on the four hour chart? That's crossing over going up. So again, real estate up nicely, 1.49%. So again, we had that two day recross that you guys we're paying attention to back on Thursday, high uh, 8207. And again, waiting for that to be reached again. But things are tracking up. We see that on the two day and we see that on the weekly. So continue to pay close attention and a nice big up day. And lastly, we'll go to oil. Uh, to go to oil. Yes, I'm looking at silver. Oh, I got to talk about silver in just a second. What's oil up to? Oil hitting a high of 3015. What did it hit back on the week of the 24th? It hit a higher high. That was 3022. But again, we see the price percent oscillator continually pull away from the red signal line. Derivative oscillator showing what's actually happening there. Some devolution in price, particularly that red spinning top ending on the, uh, the candle on the 31st. Uh, so 
that week ending then last Friday. So this is, again, evolving up a little bit, but got to reach a higher high to see some buildup in the derivative oscillator. Two-day chart, first day, again, trying to pound up there. Like we set up 1.50%. We'll see how that wraps up. Half-day chart, up in the morning, a little higher in the afternoon, crossover in the morning on the price percent oscillator. That's good. Derivative oscillator still negative. Okay, I talked myself into it. What's up with silver? You thought gold was up? Nice silver up 6.64%. Look at that weekly blasting up. That's beautiful. Two-day chart, again, going up quite nicely. We had that two-day recross occur, what, back on the 20, no, the 8th, the, uh, the 8th of July. And again, silver somewhere in the buy-in point on that two-day recross of uh, 17, around 1720, something like that, to a high, to a high of 2425. That is beautiful. Just beautiful. Derivative oscillator still losing some momentum. That's because of the slowdown in the up movement we saw tracking back on the two-day candle on the 30th and then the two-day candle on the 3rd of August. And then we look at the half day. That's crossing over uh, at the end of the day moving up. So quite nice. That two-day recross has done well for you. And of course, we look at silver where it crossed over on the weekly going up back in mid-May, and it has just been beautiful. Got a little slow uh, there in mid-June, but then slammed up into July going on into August. Beautiful. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day. I'm going to end this broadcast now and stop sweating. If you don't have our book, you want to supercharge your training, you need to order it. You'll see a link in the show notes. We'll get it to you wherever you are in the world autographed copy just for you. God bless. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth. World Headquarters is just me in the heat today. Take care.